And we are back here on the National Hour. We're going to talk a little NFL for you. Start off with the AFC North, the division uh, everyone loves around here, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Uh, not, not as much love uh, here in Ohio, but also in there with the Ravens. So it's true. everyone is tied for first place in the AFC North. How if I you fielded a team mm. in the AFC North this week, <laughs> you're in first place. But they're all 0-1. Yeah, that, that's the big surprise. You're thinking Ravens, Bengals would get wins. And that's, not, that's just not the case. Well, the Ravens, yeah. they definitely need. No, I mean, you, Super Bowl champions, I know they rebuilt, but I didn't know there was, they were this bad of a state right now. Well, the After, fact that... Well, well, pay, well that's less than Ravens. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning just went off. He had probably the best game of, of his career so far. It's like when you throw seven touchdowns, you need to match that, just get back into, in, into the game, and they couldn't. So we'll start with the Ohio teams. Cleveland losing to the Miami Dolphins 23-10. Brandon Whedon, well, he looked awful in the first half, three interceptions. He bounced back through a touchdown in the second half, but really got off to a bad start. Trent yeah. Richardson wasn't able to do much. And the, the Dolphins, their offense looked pretty good. Ryan Hartline. Former Buckeye. Former Buckeye, nine catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown. But the Browns, quarterback and situation not looking that good right now, Jeff. You no, know, Brandon Whedon, you're thinking he could be the guy that – breaks through and then he goes and throws three picks. I remember watching that game and one of the picks was deflected, given that one, but there's a few just really, really, really bad throws. And there, there. were a couple of picks that were dropped. Yeah. So he could have had more. It could have it could have been a lot worse, but then looking at the numbers again, two eighty nine yards, that's fine, but twenty six of fifty three it could be another long it could be another one of these things for Cleveland where it's like, well let's wait till next year. Granted, Trent Richardson was not hundred percent in the game, so you were going to get more than, I think he had uh, less than 10 carries in the game. Yeah, so it wasn't a you're, huge You're expecting number. him to be yeah. the workhorse, and he was not able to be it. And I think if you had Richardson in there, it would have been a little bit better. But I think either way, I think Miami still would have won that ball game, 23-10 in, in Cleveland. So I really think unless Richardson's 100%, they might have a chance. But we needs to get a little bit better. You can't be throwing three picks. And this is against Miami. You can't be doing that against higher competition like, like the Patriots or something like that it's just not going to end well so if the Browns end up with a high pick quarterback do they go quarterback why not right now because they've always they've always had an issue with quarterback but I think you have Richardson there as running back you just need someone to pass the ball and at this point just keep it on your team right now and really for Cleveland fans they've been started started the playoffs so they they want something to believe in even if it's just one or two years, that's more than what they've had already. Yeah, let's not forget Brandon Whedon, who's a second-year quarterback, is going to be turning 30 yep. coming up uh, pretty soon. So he's an older yeah, guy out old, there as a, as a young guy. Old man out there with the Browns right now. But he's, he was really good at OK State, but it's just like it's that thing for Cleveland fans. It's just like everybody we get, they're so good in college, but they just it just does they don't work here in Cleveland. No, but don't even start about Colt McCoy. And Colt McCoy, yeah, Tim Couch, Tim Couch. originally he he looked real good. He got into the playoffs, but ever since that, that's all Cleveland's had to chant about. That's about eight years ago. It's so moving on to the other Ohio team, the Cincinnati Bengals, put up a much better fight than the Brownies, but still went down 24-21. That was at Chicago, a much tougher game than Miami, but unable to pull it out. Bengals losing that one. Andy Dalton had a pretty decent game, 26 of 33, 282 yards, two touchdowns. He also had two interceptions. But the guy who really went off, your boy, A.J. Green, a AJ, yeah, 162 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, A.J. Green, the, if you had him for a fantasy play right now, he was, he was rolling the points there. With the nine catches, 162, two touchdowns, that's big. Even though they lost to the Bears, moving forward, this is the, you have A.J. Green and Dalton on a roll. They may, they're not going to lose their wild card game this year in the playoffs, and we may even think they could sneak into that divisional round with the bye. It, it, it's a stretch, but right now with the way the AFC is looking at, you know, the Broncos got that one spot. If they keep up even half of what they did against the half what they did against the Ravens, they'll be fine. It's a Patriots are rebuilding sort of because the wide receiving core is not there. It's a really a, a wide open race for that second divisional spot, and the Bengals they could slip in and get that spot. Well, especially with how open the AFC North is, uh, could be a really yeah. good year for the Bengals to make a move. Absolutely, really, you don't need to be right now spectacular in the AFC in the AFC North. You just have to be able to take that division right now. If the Ravens are struggling, the Browns are struggling, and the Steelers are struggling, it's the Bengals and the Bengals right now for first. So how about we move on to a division where a few teams actually won games? The NFC East could be one of the more exciting divisions in football let's start with uh that guy chip kelly from oregon going on to the philadelphia eagles wanted to put in the fast-paced offense and boy did he put on some yeah. fast-paced offense up tempo 
Eagles got off to a strong start, 26-7 yep. up in the first half. See, Darius, I really didn't think that whole offense was going to pan out for Chip Kelly. Then I wasn't watching the game, and someone told me to check the score. I was like, are you for real right now, Redskins? And the Eagles, they were lighting up the place, and really, Redskins stormed back, but the fact that they opened up that fast, if they're doing this week one, just think when they get the system completely, completely underneath their belt, this – this Eagle team, your Eagles, this could be a very good year for them. Well, we'll get into that in a second. Michael Vick was 15 to 25, went over 200 yards. He had two touchdowns. He had 54 yards rushing and ran for a touchdown as well. So Michael Vick has a resurgence in the game. Yes. He says he's fallen into love with ga the game again. LaShawn McCoy had a phenomenal game. If you had him on fantasy, you were definitely happy. Looking at the Eagles offense, got off to a huge start, 26 to 7. But then they fell apart in the mm -hmm. second half, and the Redskins came back. And it was a before the end, a game where yep. the Eagles were really back on their heels, only scored one touchdown in the second half. And that defense for Philadelphia has to be a little bit of a concern if you are an Eagles fan yeah. like myself. I think when you have that kind of lead and you start squandering those points away, that's a problem. But at the same time, looking at the, at the hurry-up offense, I think the Redskins were starting to break the code and how to stop them. I think a lot of teams this season have the problem of when they, they don't know how fast this offense really is, but by halftime, third quarter, they'll, get, they'll understand how it works. But the question is, if the Eagles are up high enough, they had the game in the bag. But it's like what happened to the Redskins, one or two more offensive drive stalls, the defense can't hold it up for one or two drives. It's a whole different ball game. Well, I think it was probably in that game less of the Eagles, or excuse me, the Redskins adjusting to the Eagles and more of the Eagles taking their foot off the gas because That's true. It, it's tough to play from That's with the lead and still go 100 miles per hour. And especially with that up-tempo offense, I think some of the players said they were, after the first quarter, thought it was halftime, they were that tired. And it's really, it just wears you down so much. So I think fatigue factor certainly played a, a, a factor in that. But once again, if the, once these guys get the system down, they know how fast it is. Once they get conditioned for it, this this could be four quarters of just nonstop scoring for the Eagles. So again, it was a 33-26 win for Philly over Washington. The Redskins going to 0-1. Eagles jumping up to 1-0 and, and joining the Eagles at 1-0, sticking in the NFC East. The Dallas Cowboys taking out the New York Giants. That was a 34-28 final. Cowboys getting their first win at home in the new Jerry's World AT&T Stadium, Cowboys Stadium down in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth mm -hmm. area, taking out the Giants. So the first time they were able to get that win against New York. Yeah, really, it's a big win for Dallas, as you said, Darius. They haven't, they haven't beat the Giants in their new place. They got it there, but the turnovers, though, if it wasn't for Eli's three picks and the Giants' collective six turnovers, Giants would have probably won that ball game. But it, it, you take the win when you can get the win. They certainly got it against the Giants. I mean, Eli had a bad first quarter, a couple picks. I mean, I was watching that game. It was like four minutes in. His facial expression is just, is just like, What's happening here? I, I, I'm not supposed to be throwing interceptions like this, and he already had two within like the first four or five series. And then Dallas, they kept their problems and their turnovers down to just one. And really, you can win that margin, you're pretty golden. The Dallas Cowboys look golden win that margin. The one thing to be scared of if you have to face the Giants, though, six turnovers, still put up 28 points, and they had three receivers in that game go over 100 yards. And Victor Cruz had three touchdowns. Yeah. He looks like he's ready to salsa dance his way through this season. I mean, absolutely. The Giants, if you're the Giants and you're Tom Coughlin, you go, we lost the game to the Cowboys, but the pieces, we lost close. It wasn't a blowout. The pieces were there for a potential. If they got that onside kick, the pieces were then a comeback, and probably the win could have been there because this team, they won Super Bowls with miracle catches. They saved Super Bowls with big-time catches down the sideline. It would have been more the same against the Cowboys, and if, you're, if the Giants would have got that onside kick there, if you're Dallas, you're thinking it's going to fall apart again, and the Giants are going to find a way to steal one here. It didn't happen that way, though, but the fact that the Giants can storm back, it's scary because it, it, no matter how much of a lead you have and what kind of term or margin lead you have, the Giants will always be there with you when you got Eli Manning and Victor Cruz at the helm. Game of the week, San Francisco taking out Green Bay. That was a home game for the 49ers, 34-28. San Francisco was able to win that. Colin Kaepernick absolutely went off 412 yards, three touchdowns. Vernon Davis had a couple of touchdowns. And Anquan Bolden with 208 yards and a touchdown. San Francisco and Green Bay, of course, a rematch of last year's division round. Everyone thought Green Bay is going to get yep. some revenge, but the Niners flex in their guns on offense, and they really had a phenomenal yeah, game. Yeah, what you saw in that whole game with the four Niners is Kaepernick is good, but he's great with Anquan Bolden helping them there. Bolden with 13 catches, 208 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, Baltimore made a mistake letting him go, even though they paid Flacco a lot of money, and Bolden essentially had to leave because of that. This San Francisco team, 
this is a very scary team right now with Bolden there because now I don't if he they if they can repeat last season, they're not losing the Super Bowl again. They're going to end up winning yeah. that game. What a steal for San Francisco. They traded for Anquan Bolden, but didn't give up a ton for him. Remember, they've got Vernon Davis out there who is a tight end, but he runs like a receiver. Yeah. And then they could get Michael Crabtree back before the end of the year. Mario Manningham is also on that roster. They could have a receiving core as deep as anyone if they get 100% help. I mean, this is like the opposite of the New England Patriots right now. Patriots, no one there. The 49ers have everybody there. And if everybody's healthy, I don't know how you stop the 49ers. You, the rush is good. The pass would be extraordinary. You just got to hope they just hit field goals and then Kaepernick stalls. But I don't see that happening. And as I said, a full-strength 49ers team, a 49er Broncos Super Bowl would look really nice right now with the way both teams are playing after. I know it's just after one week, but what I've seen, it's got to be a really good Super Bowl if that's what it, it, the final outcome is. Real quick, the Packers can continue their struggles with the big boys in the NFC, unable to beat San Francisco uh, two times as many times they played. So what does this mean for the Packers? I, it's early to tell for the Packers. I get it, you open up your year with a loss, but we'll go back to the Kaepernick, that sportsmanlike conduct penalty with Clay Matthews at the end. If they shouldn't have got that play back, but they did, if they don't convert on that, it's a tie ball game right now. So it's close. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but it's it sort of stings when you lose your last two games to the same team. But at the same time, if you're Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, you need to come back hungry off of this. And if they do... Packers, I can see, I can almost see a, a, like another rematch in the playoffs with Packers 49ers, and there will be a, really a three part trilogy to, to a really good rivalry so far. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about a Buckeye in the NFL. We're going to talk about possibly the league's dirtiest player. We're also going to have some game picks for you here on the National Hour.